thank you and um, thank you to um, everyone for attending tonight. So I just want to have a look at um, the position of the Scottish Labour movement with regard to Trident and Trident replacement. Um, and I think if we look back to 2007, the Scottish Parliament took a position against Trident replacement uh, and the Labour members of the Scottish Parliament at that time abstained. If you move fast forward, as it were, to 2015, the Scottish Parliament again discussed the question of Trident replacement, and this time, whilst also again adopting a policy against Trident renewal, the Labour members of the Scottish Parliament, with one exception, voted um, for, they didn't abstain, they voted for um, a policy which was against replacing um, Trident. And that was important, that, that vote in the Parliament, 96 votes to 17, November 2015, opposed Trident renewal and had and also with a motion which included a Labour amendment to add that we must also resource and seriously invest in a defence diversification plan. The weekend prior to that debate in the Scottish Parliament, there had been a debate in the Scottish Labour Party conference. Both trade unions and constituency Labour parties at that conference were had to prioritise four topics for debate. And top of the poll in October 2015, from both the trade union section and the CLP section were the topics of trade union, anti-trade union legislation and, um, the, and Trident. So for me, that's really important and it kind of symbolises the work that, that has gone on in Scotland and, 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 and elsewhere, but of bringing together Labour Party activists with trade union activists and making sure that we bring the voice of the widest possible Labour movement to this campaign. And this goes right back in Scotland to the, the, the demonstrations and, and blockades that were um, jointly organised by the STUC and active Labour Party members in 1961 when Polaris came to the Holy Law. So it's not a new alliance, but it's extremely important. The speakers at that 2015 conference from Unison made clear that the real threats were, were around climate change, cyber attacks, around housing shortages and, and crisis in the health system. Trident has no role in, in tackling those, those attacks. The speaker from Unite, Pat Rafferty, made clear that Britain should take a lead in nuclear non-proliferation and that non-renewal has to go hand in hand with a job diversification plan. The expenditure on the scale of Trident renewal was immoral. And that remains the case today, that that is Scottish Labour policy. Um, and we will argue that um, along with our um, comrades up and down the country um, in terms of the UK Labour Party. In the independence referendum in 2014 in Scotland, the SNV kind of, the, there was a division in, in how CND should actually um, deal with this debate. And I think that it's important to say for me that it's not about moving Trident from one part of the United Kingdom to another. It's about cancelling the renewal program. It's not about taking it to Devonport or something or moving it across the border. And the idea that it's it, it's really important, I don't think, I mean, a lot of the people who campaign for nuclear disarmament, whichever political party they're in, that is what they believe. There should be no nuclear weapons and we have to kind of hold on to that. It's not about where they're situated in the UK. Um, the Trident missiles, 215 nuclear warheads ready to load onto four submarines at Faz Lane threatening the lives of millions of people um, and that with their the you know in a situation where the, the national audit office has already identified that the there's a huge black hole in terms of how the ministry of defense is going to meet the cost of replacing these missiles for me there just has never been a more appropriate and more urgent time for us to reassert that we want to cancel the program and ban the bomb. Essentially, this was has always been um, an important slogan. Climate change again, and the pandemic has to really focus us on what we need to do as a society. And interestingly, a recent Labour list poll on, on this kind of policies which, which people liked of the 2019 Labour manifesto, only 12.3% of the people who responded to that poll agreed with renewing Trident, which was, of course, within uh, Labour's manifesto. The United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons comes into effect when it's ratified by 50 states, as a number of, of, of you will know. 44 states have now ratified that. 
Then again, in, in terms of how we approach that in, in our politics here in this country, the state party in, in United Nations terms is the UK government, not the Scottish government. So we have to take Scottish Labour's views, the policy of the Scottish TUC, the views of the Scottish Parliament, and add all those voices together to work with you all in campaigning to ban the bomb, to get the United Kingdom government to sign that treaty and use our resources together to build a different society, an economy for the people, a green, econ a green recovery, a green ep economic recovery. We don't have a choice for all the reasons that, 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 that of which we are aware, but we have no choice. And this is both a priority for the party and also a priority for me. And working on the NEC, we'll try to make sure that this, the policies are advanced through democratic debate and structures and not um, weakened by the, the, the temporary suspension of some of our policy processes due to the pandemic. So um, thank you for the time to speak with you all tonight and I look forward to hearing the questions. Mm -hmm.